Welcome to another edition of Grace Under Pressure, where my guest today is my friend and colleague, Dr. Oleg Konovalov. I'll tell you about him in just a moment. Grace Under Pressure is the show that poses questions to thought leaders and doers like Oleg, who are helping our world become better. Grace for me is generosity, respect, compassion. We show one another. And when leaders act in this regard, it's about mobilizing people for positive action. Welcome, Dr. Koenig, uh, Dr. Oleg Konolov. We practice that so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. It should be now, you know, we could hear the soundtrack from Gladiator. You know, <laughs> something like that. You know, yeah. Energetic and inspiring. Cool. Anyway, uh, Oleg is a thought leader, author, business educator with 25 ex years experience in working throughout Europe, including the United Kingdom. He's on the Thinker 50 radar, which is way cool. And he was recognized as the number one global thought leader on culture by Thinker 60 and the number one global leading coach by uh, Marshall Goldsmith, Thinker's 50. Way cool. He is called the Da Vinci of leader, visionary leadership because we're going to talk about what it means to have a vision uh, in a moment because he has a brand new book called The v Vision Code. Uh, Oleg works with uh, entrepreneurs and managers in areas of strategy and culture, and he's got some pretty spiffy diagnostic tools to help people gain clarity about where they are and how they can mobilize their organizations. Um, he received his doctorate from Durham University in the UK, and he's lectures basically everywhere. So welcome, Oleg. It's a pleasure to uh, have you on the show. So, sure. Thank you very much. Great. I'm grateful to sit around the campfire with you. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and we're going to get to the campfire because you began your career as a little different than I think any other consultant I know. <laughs> so, and how was that? <laughs> well, yes, I have spent a bit of time at sea. I spent many years in the fishing industry. I know how to catch a large fish. And I'm also a very keen salmon fisherman. You know, I, I fished in. Scotland, in Norway, in Iceland, in Russia. So I love it. <laughs> That's good. So um, anyway, we are in the second year of our uh, pandemic. What are your clients telling you? What are you hearing about this? So, Oh, I'm blessed. I have great clients. Uh, what has been great clients? Clients that are looking forward into the future. Of course, we all have a bit of panic, but it's a normal. We're all afraid of the future, particularly well, when we hear a lot of scary stories. Oh, the pandemic would would last forever. Oh, AI will conquer us. You know, all that funny stories. And many people are set themselves on panic mode. And I have great clients which are saying, no, 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 I will do something great. And here I come in to help them. Okay. That is a very, very different approach. Well, that's perfect. So it's it's um, that's like our colleague uh, David Neuer, who said, "This is an opportunity. Let's make it work for us." And um, that's the episode. And so um, that's good. So you have a brand new book called "The Vision Code." Um, oh, yeah. Wow, great. That's um, fun. <laughs> yep. What led you to write that book? So actually, it was very very personal. It was a personal challenge from the very beginning, for me to understand who am I, what I will do for my future, where I'm going. You know, I was thinking about those things for many years. I'm lucky enough to be in a room with visionaries. I was always interested in how people creating something incredible, magnificent. And I was looking, what's the protestants behind it? What's the magic? And I was thinking, okay, because we are so used to neglect the, world, the term itself, vision. Everything we say, it's a vision, it's a vision, it's a vision. What's actually vision is? How to, to turn it? I'm from fishing industry. You know, I don't expect passengers on the board of a fishing trawler. If you got none of the fish, go back to sea. 
I love practical. I heard you say that before, and I like it. It's a, it's no passengers. We're here to catch fish. <laughs> yes, and so if I'm writing the book, what a practical value I could share with people, uh, you know. Otherwise, I'm just a passenger on Amazon, you know, persuading people to to pay some money. That's unfair. Yeah. And so my idea was to reveal it. And reveal it in a way how to turn it into practical tool or practical instruments or tips. Mm -hmm. But John, I love your work, Grace. I believe leadership must be artful. And for me, it was also, you know, when I was working on a book, something struck me and I said, okay, what's actually the vision is a beauty and how to find the golden ratio of that beauty would be incredible. And that is a journey worth to take. That's that great. is something incredible. That's great. So well, you're the, book, the book came out of those thoughts. That's, that's great. You have a wonderful quote, and I want to read it here. It says, vision creates the fertile ground upon we build our future, okay? How we create a productive and prosperous space for all stakeholders, employees, and customers, partners, future users of the ecosystem. It depends on visionary leaders. So unpack that for us. So what, what does it mean to be visionary? So We tend to believe that leaders are people who are managing today, but leaders are people who are creating or defining that space in the future and leading people there. What's the point? Would I remember somebody who didn't make me stronger or better or lead me somewhere nice or really interesting? And vision leadership is about having vision for others, not for my personal ambitions. This is the reason why it's fertile ground, because I'm creating new opportunities new possibilities, I enhance people's capacities. That makes a very big difference. It's not about exploiting the same resources. It's not about repeating the same mistakes. It's about growing into the future. Great. Um, pick a passage in the book, if you would, and, and let's talk about that because uh, the book has so many nuggets to it that it's, it's a rich book. So uh random yeah well not random something you <laughs> don't read the index <laughs> okay. yeah yeah cool thank you well, i'm not a big fan of index I yeah <laughs> okay uh, lucky me the beauty of vision lies in its structure that may sound strange but whenever we want to create something strong and beautiful it must be clearly and effectively structured whether it would be an airplane software or vision thus we talk about engineering vision to make it robust reliable flexible simple and beautifully proportional that's i love that and um and you really get to the heart of it i think because when, I mean, vision is a topic that I've written about before and how it's aligned with purpose. But you've given in your work um, and what you teach, because you teach people and you have a certification program on this, um, mm -hmm. you give it structure. And when you do, people understand it. So tell us about structure and vision. So, You know, the the simplest way to present something is to present in a structured way. Mm -hmm. The simple way to evaluate something is to compare it with some kind of a structural metrics. When we talk about vision, me, vi, uh, vision is stands from the moment of creation to the moment of the final execution, stands on clear metrics. What I have promised people and my vision is judged against people's expectations, how they're met. In this sense, what are key elements of this construct of vision as a form of incredible thinking? I would say stimulus, because it's about acting for people and acting for their needs and acting, of course, with people. 
Because if people don't see the value for themselves, why they should fall, it's immediate indicator to show, okay, if it's my personal ambitions, I want to be a billionaire, who cares about that? But if people see the value for themselves, that's great, right? It's like, John, we cook together and we eat together. Would you go fishing with me? You'll say, yes, because it's fun. I will have something for myself. I would learn something. That's great. Let's say, John, I will go fishing. I'll catch a fish and eat it myself. Would you go for it? No. No point. That's fun. Just ignore it. So, so yeah. Okay. So, um, and you alluded to this. And so let's break down the phase. There are uh, stages, four stages of vision development. The first one you mentioned is creation. So, where, do the, where does it come from? Out of our head, out of our need, out of our purpose? What, what's going on? You know, what I'm claiming is vision comes when you're conscious of awareness of a problem you want to solve for the benefit of others, which is its pick. So it takes a time. It takes focused thinking about particular need. You know, you know, Faisy Fadahi, you know him. He's... He stands behind the creation of SaaS, software as a service. It took him 15 years to make it to the stage where it is now. So it's not just like up and go. It's not you're walking down the street and something strikes you. Oh, I have a brilliant idea for airspace industry, which I'm totally not aware of, right? Uh, but it allowed, for instance, Phasey, to create that system without writing a single code line of coding. That's enormous. It's about focus thinking what's a problem I want to solve or what kind of a solution to find for people to be to live better, to live happier, to be more satisfied. Right. You have the next concept that uh, uh, I like, um, and uh, it's the muscle, which you call strength. Tell us about strength and vision. That is what about, I just have been reading that quote, it's about strength, because if vision doesn't have the clear structure, construct, it will fail apart. And another element of it is about how we communicate vision. It's not about just talking. It's not about sending a pile of emails. It's about making others coolness of that vision because people see themselves not just benefiting from it, but being co-owners of it. In this sense, they're willing to commit themselves, to commit their effort, to contribute to it, right. to tell others that makes that impact. Well, that gets back to the simplicity of it. Gets back to what you just said when you invited me. Would you like to come and catch fish, and then we will cook them, and we will have a meal together? That's that's yeah. a, a shared vision. So. It's yes, exactly, because we all love stories, but we love to be a part of that story even more. And therefore, I'm getting people in, I'm making them a part of that story. And then uh, you alluded to this before. So I have my vision, and you and I are on board, but I need something else, and that's execution. Yeah, otherwise, you know, it's a, it's a great quote from Marshall Goldsmith. Is a, you know, ideas like insects. Most are dying. Without <laughs> speaking, nothing exists, you know. Yeah. But you know what? Let's pick up on that just for a second. Yeah. That's not a bad thing um, because we have many ideas out there floating. So only the best survive. Would you agree, Oleg? So. Yes, the strongest survive. And Fine. ideas which are for people. So why ideas are meaningful? Why those ideas are supported by investors, by great employees, by customers? Because they're great and valuable for people. Right. Now, you bring these concepts. You've got the that's creation. That's thought. You see, insects, it's a great analogy because insects just sucking your blood. They're not giving anything back. Ah. And that's, it could be viewed as from that point. Right. Uh, and that gets to our final stage, which is 
what's in it for me? Or as you say, the visionary you. You. And vision is huge. It's bigger than me. Times, it's, it's phenomenally huge. It's bigger than the organization. I must be really strong to, to be able to lead it. And so I'm becoming the brain behind it. And it was amazing observation to see how these visionaries, which I brought into the book, 19 great visionaries, and of course, I just observed others, how they think and how they act. For me, it was very important to open a window into the way of thinking and acting. It's not just like, oh, I will be on time or being self-disciplined. No, it's beyond all this. Some things that we can't see, you know, oh, it's not like in a commonly published articles on the internet. It's something beyond. Now, in, in your book, um, do you have a, um, when it comes to uh, vision and people you respect and vision, any one or two people or stories you want to share with us on that? So. They're all amazing. Think, David Katz, he created, a, I mentioned Faisi Fatihi. Yeah. David Katz, he is founder and CEO of phenomenal initiative called Plastic Bank. He managed to create an idea how to clean ocean from plastic waste and turn it into currency. And people are, live across coasts. They're collecting this plastic waste, washing it to, to Plastic Bank, they would pay them with electronic money for food, shelter, medicine, schooling, Wi-Fi, everything. Recycles it, sell it as a raw material, as a plastic raw material to the big guys. And so all happy, ocean is cleaner, people wealthier. It's a huge impact. Ashish Advani. He runs a huge charity. Junior achievement. They're helping 11 million, millions of young people to gain their first profession. That's a huge initiative. Huge. So it's every person is tremendous. But a different word. I was having a chat with someone and they said, Look, why I didn't brought, you know, typical those huge visionaries like. Elon Musk and say, what's your chance to meet Elon Musk in this life? He said, zero. I said, I brought people with whom you could connect, talk, or send a message and get a response. Because that's real. So you could learn from people who do great things, but they're around us. So that's about inspiration. Because in my view, inspiration is a signal. I can't do this. Okay. No, I, I like that. You clarify the vision code into um, a word called a caviar. I don't know where a fisherman came up with that idea, but... <laughs> it's still delicious. <laughs> anyway, so the first C is clarity. Um, we use that word, but what does clarity mean in this context? So, It's, as I mentioned, vision comes when you have a conscious awareness of a problem also. How clear is that? It's not about, I want to make a world better, or we, we want to become the number one uh, auto producer in the world. No. It's about what problem you want. How clear is it? And that would make a huge difference. Whether on a local scale, or national, or global scale, how it is clear. When it's clear, you need less resources, you're getting more energy, you're very focused, and it becomes executable. And so it becomes a magnet for people. Okay. The next thing is ability. How is ability, how are you framing that, Oleg? So. Uh, that was a tough because first I lived it through myself. Then I tested on many of my clients, like, guys, let's try it. Would you be my guinea pigs? And then, of course, I turned it into practice. I, I have a form, a very practical form, which co I called CLICK. It's about developing courage, 
learning, inner excellence. It's about confidence and credibility, and it's about knowledge bank. You can't explore a new world, a new dimension without courage, bold thinking. But courage is a skill that can be taught and they have special questions for it. Learning, it's not about it's not only about reading books, but it's about what do you learn for growth. I learn to lead people better. That is very important. It's about inner excellence because you need to become stronger mentally, psychologically to lead bigger projects. You must be confident in terms of how you deliver your promises. It's not about I'm confident, I'm overconfident, I'm self-confident. That's cool. But I'm confident, in fact, when I know that I will deliver my promise. And because of this, people know and they trust me. And that leads to credibility. And of course, it's about knowledge bank because I can't be a visionary on my own. I must engage others to share their knowledge, contribute to that bank. And a simple test, a very simple question. Do we need to employ some a new, a new team member to cover the gap in knowledge or we could cover it ourselves and create an even stronger knowledge? Okay. That's the ability question. Okay. Yes. Good. Um, next thing that you uh, tie in, which is maybe the most self-evident part of vision, is visibility. What do you mean by viability? Viability. Oh, viability. Excuse me. <laughs> well, that's what we discuss. It's about having clear structure, yeah. stimulus, scale, simplicity, spotlight, uh, scanning, and excitement and passion. What's element? How to test them? It's vision viability test, which I share because that's relevant for businesses or for your personal life or for investors to evaluate the project. It's about having clear understanding what you will gain no, and how you will grow. When we talk viability, so does it come to a point where sometimes you have to walk away then? Yes. Okay. If all, in fact, if you see, you're still using gas, you're still using your thinking, you understand, okay, something is weak. That means I need to re-edit my thinking to improve something. It doesn't mean that idea is completely stupid, but it needs revising. Okay, that's great. Um, now, what is what the power of this comes through influence? How does this, how do vision and influence coexist? What's that all about? So. John, you know that about thousand words are being new words being added every year to the English dictionary. Actually, Those I didn't know that, but thank you. <laughs> well, okay. No, but you know this. Yeah. But I think is <clears throat> all those words, it's not they're coming from visionaries. They're creating something new, they're inventing new terms, they're very easily picked up because they're understood by all. And people we're zooming now, right? <laughs> we're Googling now. Yeah. Whatever. Now it's a clubhouse. Whatever is it, it's becoming a term that people really understand. That how we communicate new meanings. And then we get into communication, we get into sharing, and it ends up into co-ownership of that vision. It's nothing wrong about the influence. It's about how people who are remote, say, not sitting next to me, but they're still contributing to that vision. Good. The next one, I think, is um, this is where, again, you had strength in there, but I, here, here's some more acting. What does it mean to act on vision? It's about being a strong leader. And a strong leader, it's not about consensus because you took responsibility to lead people somewhere. If you, you're looking for consensus if you don't know where you go. And it's about strong decision making because you're encouraging people to do something beyond themselves every day. It's not about making choices, but you could do this only by making people free. And what does it mean being free? 
it's knowing where I go. Okay. And this last concept I, I want to touch on is it, revitalizing because sometimes we become so enamored of our vision that we think it's perfect, but of course it's not. So where does revitalization come in? So, John, nothing perfect in this life except the life itself, if you consider so, because uh, it can be ideal or perfect for that particular moment. But tomorrow it would be very different. Even though I'm always saying to my wife, okay, I'm not ideal, but I'm cool. <laughs> you know, even because maybe at some moment I'm ideal, mm -hmm. but the rest I'll better keep it, you know, cool. Yeah. And what happens? Life is changing. We achieved something. It's about not resting on your achievements. It's about expanding on your achievements. And that is very different. You must revise what's going on. You must reshape it. You still have a core of it, but you still, you adding different bright facets to it. Does that, um, I, I'm getting back to what you had talked about initially about vision beginning with self, our self, and then closing, or I'm, I'm in our discussion, we're coming into revitalization. Um, is that what? It, and is there a link to looking in the mirror and saying, "Is this real? Is this? Do what more do I need to do?" So. Yes, it's it's not about oh, I am great. No, you're not great. <laughs> you know, you're I just know. a working horse. <laughs> yeah, you know, thank you. You know, thanks everyone who helped me to create something, and we could do even more. Yeah. Yes, it's about being honest to yourself and to others in terms, okay, I, I'm grateful for having a chance to create my vision and achieve it. Thus, I must pay back to others by creating something bigger and stronger. And that's like Marshall named me, okay, the Da Vinci Vision Leadership. You know Marshall. <laughs> they graciously placed a lot of responsibility on my shoulders. What, uh, liking you to da, Vi da Vinci? Oh, not, not a lot yet. of pressure there, really. <laughs> you know, it's not about, yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, I'm cool, but I must do more. Well, that's, I mean, and you talk about, because the subtext of, of, of all I know you and what you speak and teach on um, are the res responsibilities of leaders. And, and that's really under, that's your foundation for vision. Am I correct? So. Yes. And the first question, whose skin is in the game? If you're not putting your skin, think, John, control is an illusion, Right. Can you make, in fact, yeah. but you could make this, put the things under control if the people who are taking feel responsible. Otherwise, it would remain illusion. You would be rushing around. You will end up in micromanagement. Nothing great would happen. True. So we are, time is flying by and we are coming to the end of our show. Um, and I always ask our guests uh, a story about grace. And I know you have a, uh, something you wish to share. So. Yes. As I mentioned, leadership is, must be artful. And in my view, grace, it's elegance. It's brilliant thinking. You know, it's very structured. It's, it's something that inspires people. I have a group of uh, Ole Kanawala visionary leaders, and we have a simple principle. We're here to reveal the greatness of each other. That's about making people better. That's about inspiring each other. It's about bearing, being each other. Uh, a multiplier which has a passion. And that is a grace in my view. Absolutely. It's a commitment to others and how can we share and make, and become um, help uh, help ourselves, but also help others. We help ourselves by helping others. So yep. um, Alec, how can people find you? So. Oh, I'm not hiding. That's for fuck. <laughs> you know? LinkedIn, welcome, 
happy to connect, happy to respond to messages. My website, olikkanavalov.com. And we will uh, put it in the notes. So, Yeah. Uh, I'll put it in the notes. Okay. It's okay. And uh, I will put it in. I didn't mean you. Yeah, you will put it because some kind of a duck jumping out. <laughs> Anyway, hey, uh, Ollie, this has been fun. Um, thank you very much for sharing time with us. And with that, I will say goodbye, my friend. So, gracious, thank you. <laughs>